You may have heard about ranked choice voting before. It's often talked about as a way to solve a lot of issues that exist with the first past the post or simple majority system used in most American elections, including those for US Congress and many statewide elections and elections in many other countries. And it's true, ranked choice voting, or RCV, would solve many of the issues brought about by the deeply flawed first past the post system. However, the opinions that I often see surrounding the implementation of RCV in the US pretty much completely overlook the primary flaw with our current election system, and I haven't really seen a lot of people take notice. So, today, I want to examine ranked choice voting, how it could work, and how many politicians are proposing it be used without fully understanding the issues, and hopefully I'll be able to shed some light on how RCV is in fact a great solution to many of the problems that exist in our current democratic system, but how proper implementation is vitally necessary to the system actually solving any of those issues. So let's start from the beginning. How do elections currently work in the United States? Well, in a nutshell, federal elections, as well as most state elections, currently operate in a kind of two-round system, whereby individuals vote within their own parties for whichever candidate they want to send onto the general election. These first-round party elections are called primaries. There are also caucuses, but those have problems all on their own, so for the sake of this video, let's just pretend it's all primaries. Then, the winner of each party's primaries, plus whatever independent candidates are running, face off in the general election. Currently, we also have an electoral college for the presidential election, which is also flawed in many ways, but I won't be discussing that in this video either. For this video, I'm just going to assume that we are in fact interested in replacing the electoral college, though I will leave some links in the description to some articles and videos that you can check out about why the electoral college is so problematic. So without an electoral college, the first logical step would be to replace it with a straight first-past-the-post popular vote, which is what we already use for congressional elections. In this case, we would use the primary and general election two-round system that I described earlier. The biggest problem that I see in this system, and in many others, is that it requires that voters be particularly strategic in their choices. For example, let's say we have three candidates. For the sake of example only, we'll call them Donald Trump, Joe Biden, and Bernie Sanders. However, I want to make explicitly clear that I'm only using recognizable names so that you can keep track of who's who given the most superficial information you know about these three people. I'm not intending to comment on any individual politician or the US voter base in real life. Okay, so let's say, for example, that voters are split about evenly into four different camps. We have staunch Trump supporters, staunch Biden supporters, and staunch Sanders supporters. And then there's a fourth group that aligns most closely with Sanders in principle, but are going to vote for Biden instead because they want more than anything else to keep Trump from being elected. And they feel that Biden has the best chance of swinging voters who might otherwise consider voting for Trump. So the primaries happen and the Democrats cast a majority of their votes for Biden. So Biden takes on Trump in the general election, even though about half of all voters would have supported Sanders first and foremost if they were guaranteed their vote would count. So, how do we solve this problem, ensuring that voters always have their vote counted? Well, let's take a look at ranked choice voting. RCV usually refers to an instant runoff system, where every voter ranks ideally every candidate in the election from their first to last choice. If, after all the first choice votes are tallied, no particular candidate has a majority, then the candidate with the least support is eliminated, and all of that candidate's voters get their votes reassigned to their second choices, and the process keeps repeating until one candidate has a majority. Now, many people suggest that we should instate a policy of ranked choice voting. But most of the people I see arguing this aren't really fully articulating the ins and outs of how they want it to actually work. Mostly, I see people talking about using ranked choice, instant runoff voting to replace the primary election where there tends to be more than two frontrunner candidates, and then maybe also use it for the general election as well. That's how the system works in Maine, and although it continues to face legal challenges, it should provide for federal and state 
primary and general elections, except for the presidential general election, which is done nationally, to be conducted through instant runoff RCV. Great, right? Well, not exactly. It actually took me quite a while to figure out how Maine implemented RCV, because the referendum question that instituted the policy, as well as most of the commentary I could find about the plan, sort of just assumed that it would obviously replace both the primary and general elections, but, crucially, keep them separate. Nothing mentioned specifically that this would be the case, because it seems as if lawmakers, advocacy groups, and journalists didn't even consider the possibility of just holding one election with an instant runoff system. Now, a one-round election like this in a first-past-the-post electoral system would be a disaster. You need those primaries to eliminate too many ideologically sim similar candidates, because otherwise, pretty much whichever party had the most candidates running would lose. But with RCV, it is actually perfectly possible, and in fact preferable, to have just one election. To see the flaw with keeping the election separate, let's go back to our Trump-Biden-Sanders example. Again, we have about a quarter Trump voters, about a quarter Biden, and about a quarter Sanders. And then we have that fourth group who align ideologically with Sanders, but will do whatever it takes to avoid Trump being elected. So, let's think about that group's options. In the Democratic primary, if they choose Sanders first, Sanders will win. If they vote for Biden, Biden will win. In fact, there is no such thing as instant runoff when dealing with just two candidates, because a majority for one of them is guaranteed in the first round of voting. So this scenario is the exact same as with a popular vote. The reason the RCV didn't change anything is because, after the primary, there is still a separate general election, where Trump will face off against one and only one Democratic challenger, so the voters still need to be strategic about who they want in that position. Now, it is true that using RCV in this way does still have an effect on the primaries, allowing voters to feel more confident in selecting less mainstream candidates. Remember, though, that doesn't mean that a less popular candidate will end up winning. They still need to be the first one to get majority support. I know I said I wasn't going to talk specifically about any politicians, but I am going to break that a little and talk about what's happened in the 2020 election. When the Democratic field was larger, if the primary election were done by RCV, the support of some candidates that ultimately ended up falling out of the question may have been boosted. Because the field was so large, candidates polar polling lower expected they had no chance of winning, and if they held out until the end, they could jeopardize a similar candidate's run. RCV could have kept these people in the race, and made the election itself determine who was the most popular candidate, rather than polling and expectations. However, first of all, it may very well be that Biden would in fact be found to be the most popular, and the RCV wouldn't have made a difference. Or maybe it would have. But the overarching question of who will best be able to win the most support in the general election when the whole country is voting is not eliminated from the voters' minds. In other words, voters are still forced to consider how other people will vote when they cast their own votes. And you might say, well, isn't it better for voters to think about electability so we end up with the candidate with the broadest support? But to that I say, it is the responsibility of the election system, not the individual voters, to select the most popular candidate. The voters should be able to vote for who they want for president without fear of their vote not going to the right person. Because if nothing else, Voters can end up being wrong about who will have the best shot of winning, or their fear of voting for someone electable can actually make someone else that doesn't really represent too many people's interests being elected, just because they seem like they would be the most appealing option to the other side. And that brings me to my last point, which is that instant runoff voting may not be the best method. If you think an election official should represent the broadest pace base possible, even if there is not particularly fervent support there, rather than representing a large, passionate voting block, but one that exists with a large rift between it and the next group of voters. There is certainly a large unsettled debate to be had surrounding what an election system should prioritize. Recently, I've been looking at Condorcet methods, a category of ranked choice voting systems which elect the candidate that wins all possible one-on-one -on -one matchups with each other candidate. 
I encourage you to look into some voting systems yourself. I'll put some links in the description, because there's a lot of nuance and really interesting things to compare. But let me conclude with two final things. One is that some people have caught on to the need for a one-round RCV system. Actually, quite a few cities use a one-round RCV system for their elections, or at least they do a preliminary round with all the candidates, and then a final two runoff so the two most popular candidates can debate and be scrutinized more carefully head-to-head, -head, which is much better than a party-segregated system. I don't think that exact method would work very well for national elections, but that's besides the point. The point is that oftentimes people make assumptions that RCV definitely would, or definitely would not, make voting happen with a single ballot election, which makes talking about the system very difficult and confusing, especially for people who are just getting introduced to it. Just look at all these opinion pieces advocating for RCV. These say that we need RCV, but then don't mention the option to combine the primary and general election. These say that we need RCV, but then assume that inherently means combining the elections, and I honestly can't figure out which option this article is even looking at. When we talk about ranked choice voting systems, we have to be clear about what exactly we mean, because as of now, there is no consensus. RCV does not necessarily imply doing it one way or the other, so we have to be clear if we want to keep discussing the merits of RCV systems in a productive way. And of course, my second concluding point is to caution against rallying behind politicians that stop at replacing the Electoral College with a simple popular vote or even with a ranked choice method that keeps the primary and general election convention. If we are going to take the step to implement ranked choice voting, we need to go all the way, combining the primary and general elections into one race. And in general, I think it's really important for us to be willing to step past what we know and what we're familiar with, and eliminate our preconceptions of how politics does work, and instead ask how politics should truly work. It's critical to constantly be re-evaluating the systems we have in place with a keen eye, ensuring that tradition and convention don't hold us back from implementing the best policies. Now one final thing before I go, I promise. RCV is often dismissed as being logistically impossible to implement on a large scale, such as for the US presidential election, because there needs to be one central vote counting operation that would either need way too many employees to hand count the ballots, or a computer system would need to crunch the numbers and be solely trusted to spit out the correct result for the outcome of one of the most important elections in the world. But I have actually devised a, a perfectly reasonable method that scales with population and allows for entirely paper-based and logistically feasible tabulation of votes, and one that could apply to instant runoff or Condorcet voting uh, systems pretty much as easily, securely, and foolproofly as a popular vote count. I'll be posting a video about that in the near future, so you might want to subscribe so you don't miss it. But besides that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please do leave a like if you did, and feel free to leave a comment or shoot me an email if you think I missed something. But anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.